that. That's what we came to see. The famous Stephen Third. Almost worth the ride just to look at it, isn't it, Hoppy? Yeah, but it won't be worth the ride back to Bar 20 unless we take some of them with us. You know, Hoppy, I sometimes wish I was a cow. Why? Well, they always seem to be standing knee-deep in something to eat. Ha! <laughs> I don't get it. Huh? You don't get it. <laughs> Come on. It's quite ranking. Throw down that trunk. hadn't been for those strangers. Everybody all right? Well, yes, I guess so. All right. We certainly want to thank you. My name's Mark Jackson. Oh, glad to know you. I'm Hopalong Cass. How do you do? This is Lynn Bradley in yeah. California, Lynn, Carlson. It's a pleasure. Carlson, this is Mrs. Stevenson, her daughter. How, How do you do? do? We're very grateful to you. Well, I was very glad... Oh. Oh, Mother. Oh, oh, Mother. I... Oh, oh, Tom. Tom, you're hurt. Oh, yes, ma'am. The gun got me. Those outlaws. Yeah. Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, this gun here got me when I was ducking down away from them, you see. Yeah. Oh, oh, Tom. <laughs> Did you lose anything of value? Just about $10,000 worth of jewels. And my wedding dress. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the wedding. Oh, well, if every couple had to wait for jewels and wedding gowns, there wouldn't be many marriages. Oh, you're mistaken. I'm not the bridegroom. Oh. He's waiting at the mission. I'm just the best man, and my best hasn't been good enough. I better ride over to the mission and tell Richard. All right. And, Mark, we better go back to the ranch. Sure. Glad to have met you. All right. May we see you back home? Well, that's awfully kind of you. All right. <laughs> Tom, will you turn around, please? Yes, sir. I'd like to see the jewels that stopped my wedding to a girl like that. Now, you don't know, Richard. No, but if I did, I'd tell him the same thing. See, the land was all he had left except the jewels. They were a heritage from his mother. He could have sold them for a lot of money. Well, she doesn't look like the type of girl that money would make any difference to. But it will to Richard. He's proud, very proud. In fact, I'm not so sure that he'd ask Marie to start life on a huge string, knowing what she's had before. I'm sure of one thing, though. I don't relish telling him what's happened. Well, see you later. I... Oranges as big as your head. It never rains, and yet the grass grows taller in the corn in Iowa. Does <laughs> that rain? Sure, in the nighttime. Why, well, the water just pops right up out of the ground. Every blade of grass is its own little fountain. You can see a chimney, kind of, <laughs> kind of flickery dickery in the moonlight. <laughs> well, I don't know much about the fountains, but you certainly have built a beautiful place here. No, I do hope you'll stay to enjoy it. Well, you're very kind. But as a matter of fact, our running into you the way we did was quite a coincidence. Oh, really? Yes, we were on our way here to your ranch to see if we'd buy some of your prized cattle. Oh, that's a difficult request to grant, Mr. Cassidy. We've never sold any of the cattle. The herd is all that Marie can call her own. And now that the jewels, uh, Richard's wedding present to Marie, are stolen... Well, maybe we can help you get the jewels back. Oh, what do you mean? Well, from what you've told us of this outlaw, Quirt, he seems to confine his raids pretty much to this valley. That's true. His gang has a hideout in the mountains east of here. But no one's ever been able to run him down. But he'll have a hard time getting rid of jewels. 
I should imagine he'd rather have cash. But we couldn't raise enough cash to buy them back. But that's where we come in. I'll give you $4,000 for a hundred head of your cattle. Oh, I don't think my future son-in-law would like that idea. But uh, if you're right about Quirt, we may consider your offer. Well, I hope we're right. Pride ever to leave me waiting on the church steps. They took everything. Your mother's pearls and her brooch and everything. Yes, I know. But they didn't get this. And that's all that matters. Oh. Marie, aren't you going to introduce your guest? Oh, excuse me. Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Carlson, Mr. Bradley. My fiance, Mr. Adams. How do you do? How do you do? Howdy. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Jackson? Well, I'm glad someone gave Court an argument. Richard was robbed this morning, too. You were robbed? Yes, on the way to the mission. There were three of them. It was the jewels they wanted, and they were pretty sure they'd get them, too. Why do you say that? Because there was a ransom note waiting for me at the mission when I got there. Quirt must have known that uh, either Marie or I would be carrying the jewels. A ransom note? Well, Mr. Cassidy was just saying that... Yes? What was he saying? Well, I merely said that they'd probably rather have cash than jewels they couldn't dispose of. How much do they want? $3,000 to be delivered to the Castle Rocks by the day after tomorrow. Richard, we can raise the money. Mr. Cassidy has offered us $4,000 for a hundred head of our cattle. Well, that's very kind of Mr. Cassidy, but I don't want you to sell your cattle, Marie. I'll raise the money. But, Richard, listen. I'd like to talk to you alone. If you'll excuse us. Sure. Excuse me. Well, I didn't mean to start a quarrel, but... Oh, nonsense. Richard has too much pride for his own good. He doesn't want to accept financial aid from a woman. But I think we can win him over. And now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, please. Certainly. Yes, ma'am. I've got to ride into town, Mr. Cassidy, but I'd like you to see my ranch before you go. Any time you say, fine, I'll come and get you tomorrow morning, early, right? Well. What made that Cassidy so certain about the ransom? Perhaps he's had experience with outlaws. Yes, it looks that way. First he predicts a ransom note, and then he tries to buy your cattle so as you can pay off. I don't believe Mr. Cassidy is an agent for Quirt. Oh, no, the facts fit together much too neatly. You're wrong, Richard. Well, maybe I am, but I'm not going to let you sell any of your cattle. The jewels were mine, and I'll find the money to get them back. How? I'll sell some of my land. Don't do that, please. We'll get a hundred cattle back in a year's time, but land doesn't multiply. I'll handle this matter. Please don't be so stubborn, Richard. Dog on it. <laughs> It's just the life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Say, looks like she's telling him off. Well, is that anything to grin about? Oh, oh no, Hoppy. I wouldn't wish him any hard luck for the world. No. Listen, Sonny. We came here to buy cattle, not to break up a romance. <laughs> space to raise cattle in this country. Oh, by the way, I've been trying to buy some of those Stevens purebreds for a long time. If by any chance they sell you any, I'd give you a good profit for about 50 head of them. Well, they won't be mine to sell. Why not? They belong to the bar 20. That's the outfit we ride for in Arizona. Oh. Well, the Stevens need money badly, so I hope it works out. But even if it does, I guess that won't solve Marie's problem. I think Richard would rather rob a bank than to ask her for any money. Really? <laughs> family jewels with me. No, but you brought your wallet with you. Hand it over. You leave that Jennifer's watch. All right, get down off your horse. Come on! 
Hold it, Lynn. Can you imagine us walking into a trap like that? Hey, come back here and I'll orphan your children and widow your wives. Did you lose much? Four thousand dollars. I'm afraid it was my fault for bringing you up here. Oh, those things happen. You don't think much of our guns. Their own either. Wait a minute. What are these initials? R.A. That's Adam's gun. You mean Richard Adams? Was he with him? Of course not. Well, you said yourself you'd rather rob a bank. Well, he must have sold a gun and lost it. I was only joking. Four thousand dollars is no joke. Let's get back to the ranch. I want to see his face when we show him that gun. Now, please don't fly off the handle. Wait until you know the facts before you condemn him. Don't worry about it. Thanks, Mr. Casty. Say, I'll run to San Bernardino and tell the sheriff you've been robbed. All right. Here are horses. Well, everything's settled, Marie. I'll have the money tomorrow morning. Richard, I wish you wouldn't sell your land. Well, the deal's all made. Now, don't you worry. I'll have your jewels and your wedding dress back. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. We didn't mean to intrude. Don't be silly, you're not intruding. How was your ride? A little expensive, I'm afraid. We were held up. By quirk. He picked us cleaner than the hounds, too. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. We lost all our cattle money. The money I hoped you could use for the ransom. I've made arrangements for that ransom money already, Mr. Cassidy. You don't say. I thought I made myself clear. Let's see you make yourself clear about that gun we found. Yeah. Why, Richard, that's yours. Yes, the outlaws took that from me when they robbed me yesterday. Thanks. I don't remember you saying anything about losing a gun. I didn't think it important enough to mention till now. Maybe from now on you better carry a gun without your initials on it. Excuse it. Of course. Well, they're actually trying to pin something on me. But why should they? To cover their own tracks. After all, they rescued Mother and me. Yes, after the holdup. Why not if they can get a hundred head of your prize cattle for it? They offered a generous price for the cattle, Richard. And then were robbed so that they couldn't meet the author. You don't think they just happened to find this gun, do you? I suppose you think he just happened to lose that gun. Yeah, and Quirk just happened to find it, then happened to lose it again, where we happened to find it. I just said maybe Jackson's right. Maybe it's too early to condemn Richard. Jackson. No one reason except for Adams. He was going to be the best man at the wedding. Yeah. Who else knew you were carrying that money, Hoppy? Nobody. Except the best man. My jaw's still sore from where you boys clipped me, you know. You don't have to overplay your parts. Give me back my watch. Well, we only took it to make the hold-up look good. I know. And now the cash. All of it? All of it. All $4,000 of it. Hold on, Chief. Maybe we can't get rid of these things. Ah, so we'll just take our share out of this. You get the cash. But you'll get it from Richard Adams. My Adams ain't got a red cent. He will have. Because I'm going to give him this for a slice of his best land. And he'll simply give the money back to you as a ransom for those little trinkets. You'll get the cash, I'll have the land, and Adams will get his jewels back. Fair enough. Yeah, nice little wedding present for the boy. Whenever a man's land poor, I'm always willing to take the burden off his hands. What's the matter with you? Well, I was just trying to figure who's the loser in the deal. Cassidy. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be seeing you. Yep. Bye, boys. Mom. idea. <laughs> Molly just likes my music, that's all. Sure, she likes anything that ain't work. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Think you're smart, eh?
can you fall in there? Uh, look, tell, these folks is gonna... Uh, get me out of here. Just hang on now, California. I'll have you out of there. Shake of a dead... Wait just a minute. Ah! Good. Sell that gun, the old friend. business basis. Why won't you just accept the money as a sort of a friendly loan, huh? Now, you know I don't do business that way. I won't accept the money without giving you security. All right. As long as you insist. Here. Here's the grant deed to 600 acres. Thank you. There's your 3,000. Thanks, Mark. When I get the jewels, I'll sell them and use part of the money to buy back this land. You know, it's the best acreage I have on the ranch. You can have it back any time you want it. You know that. Sure you don't want me to go along? No, no. Quirt said that the deal would be off if I brought anyone with me. All right. Good luck to you. Anytime I can do anything else for you, don't you hesitate to call on me. Thank you. Hey, quit talking and pull me up. What? Hundred dollars. I think kids throw themselves down the well, but never a grown up man. We got you darn it out there. Hang on, that's the stuff. Uh oh, I'm whirly digging. Church, oh, oh, I'm getting digging. Oh, 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 look at me. Oh, <laughs> 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 I knew there were frogs in this well, but I never expected to find one as big as you. Now, I never expect to see a fellow throw hundred dollar bills down a well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Come on, Tom, I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, sure, sure. Do you notice that yellow back? That was one of Hoppy's bills. It was. I'm sure of it. It was crisp and new, and you don't see yellow backs like that around very often. Why, the ornery thief. Come on, let's stand him in his head and shake them bills out of his pants. Not yet. We better get Hoppy. Yeah, we better. Now, you find him. I want to talk to Marie. Yeah. Hello there. Oh, hello, Marie. Have some? Yes, thanks. Marie. Yes? Do you mind if I ask you a question? It's kind of a personal one. Not if you don't mind my not answering it. If it's too personal. Well, how long have you known Richard Adams? Oh, ever since I was so high. Oh, you know him pretty well, then. Very well. Why? Well, have you been in love with him ever since? Since I was so high. Well, Only I didn't know him so very well, then. Well, I've got something pretty terrible to tell you. Something terrible? Yes, I thought it'd only be fair to warn you. Warn me? Against what? Against Richard. I'm convinced he's connected with Quirt. Well, 
Perhaps I should warn you that Richard is convinced you're an outlaw. He thinks I'm an outlaw. Could you tell who was with Adams? No, I couldn't tell who it was, Hoppy. The man's voice sounds mighty queer from the bottom of a well. <laughs> I imagine it would. It is. What makes you so sure it was my money, though? Well, people don't use folding money in this part of the country, Hoppy. You know that. Yeah. They use hard money, gold and silver. Besides, Lynn recognized them yellowbacks. That's right, Hoppy. We got them red-handed. Yeah? Well, what are you going to do about it? Oh, shake him down and turn him in. He's the brains behind Quirk's gang. Wait a minute. Frames in the hurry to join the body. Well, I'm trailing. Me too. Wait a minute. Have you any objections to my coming along? Another time. No, neither am I. I doubt it. Even if he is, it's your money. It was. Oh, no, I won't. You'll get the money when I get the jewels. All right. Wait here. Let's see where he's going. Me. I've got a date with that two-faced bridegroom. All right, but don't start any fireworks. You come with me. Out in the open, have you? Don't worry about that. Just give me the four thousand dollars. You'll get three thousand dollars when you complete your part of the bargain. Bargain? I don't know what you're talking about. Just give me that money. Where you get up on that horse. Thanks, Mr. Bradley. Well, thank me. If it wasn't for Marie, I wouldn't be such a chump. Get going.
said you would be. Boys, the boss wasn't kidding. Young Adams is here with the cash to pay off. What about the stuff in that trunk? Oh, keep that for your hotel. I'll take this for mine. I'll take a souvenir. Wait job. a minute, wait a minute. Now, there's enough for all of us. Relax, gentlemen. Get my guns, California. I'll take care of that. Get over there. California. Get that trunk out here and see if there's anything left in it. After him, Hoppy? No, let him go. We got this one. He's the one we want. Hoppy, I got the jewels and I got the money, too. The money? You mean you took the money from Adams? Yep, and I sent him home a flying. Now, how come you let him go? Marie loves him. If you want to send him to jail, go ahead. I'm afraid you pulled a boner this time, Lynn. I just wanted to have a talk with him. Mm. What about it, Quirt? Is Jackson back of this? You won't live long enough to find out. If we didn't outnumber you three to one, I'd knock out your teeth and hammer them back into your head. A bloodthirsty pair, aren't they? All right, we'll take him back to the ranch. He'll talk before he gets a rope around his neck. Was bloodthirsty, Pretty. Because of the wedding, the jewels was lost. Because of the jewels, the money was lost. Because of the money, the romance was lost. Oh, gone. gone with a mess. Got quit. What are we going to do? Plenty. You all take the cut off and pick up some guns. I'll meet you at the lookout rocks. What about the chief? He'll be there. Get moving. Tom, I told you to follow them if they trailed me. Oh, well, shucks, I ain't got four hands. I can't steer if I play the music, and if I don't play the music, she won't move. Now, never mind that. Those Arizona bandits double-crossed me. They took the money and kept the jewels. Oh, my goodness. You mean Lynn in California? Yes, they're the brains behind Quirt's gang. Well, I'll be doggone. Now, look, you ride over to the West Range, pick up Jim and Lefty, and meet me at the ranch. We're going hunting. Now, yeah. hurry. Oh, my goodness. Poor little Molly. A mule with a heart of gold. And such a black-hearted boss. Well, Molly, come on, let's go. Hmm? Oh, well. Hey! Hey! Try that again, you'll have to get hurt. You know, it might be better for you later on no. if you turn to state's evidence now. You robbed us of $4,000. Adams only had $3,000. What'd you do with the rest of it? I don't know. What'd you do with the other thousand? I never kept a red cent of that money. Oh, well, if Adams only had $3,000, Jackson certainly gave you a jippin'. Why, that dirty then double cut. to hand my money over to Jackson to give to Adams, huh? I didn't say that. You didn't need to. It's written all over you. Come on, get out of here.
What happened? Everything. What's wrong? Cassidy and his men stormed us. They got Quirt and the jewels, but the rest of our men got away. Our boys will be here in a minute with some guns. Where's Adams? He took no part in it. Adams brought the ransom money and wanted to pay off, but Cassidy broke up the deal. Well, things could be worse. They haven't got any real evidence against me. Adams and Cassidy suspect each other. Yeah, but they still got Quirt. And you know he can't keep his mouth shut. He'll talk if they ask any questions. You know, Slash, I don't think Quirt's of much use to us anymore. No. I've been thinking the same thing. Solid. He never fell. He must be tied to that saddle. I know when I hit a man. Ten to one, he's dead already. He better be. I've got to make sure. I'll ride over to Stevens Ranch. You wait here. If he's still alive, I'll come back and give you a signal. And it'll be up to you to finish him. We'll be watching for you. You leave that musical mule here. Yes, uh, come on. Uh, okay, come on. Give me a hand, Jeff. Get him off. That's good. Here, give him some water. Ah, it's no use. I'm finished. Get the chief. Who is it? Jackson is behind the whole thing. Was Adams in cahoots with Jackson? No. It's all Jackson. Double-crossed everybody. And he had me shot. I hope you get him, Cassidy. We'll do our best, Clerk. Good enough for me. You can put your gun away. Bert can't hurt you anymore. That's all I see. Thanks for saving us a long ride. Too bad you didn't get here sooner. Bert just made a very interesting confession. I'm sure he did. Now that you've shot him, why, he can't squeal on you, can he? What are you talking about? We didn't kill him. But he was ambushed by his own gang. Yeah, and you told us your friend Jackson was the head man. Oh, now you'll have to reach further and do better than that for an alibi. Why don't you grow up? Any five-year-old can tell he's the guilty one. Well, a child could see that your mistake was in killing Quirk. You were only thieves before, and I have a murder charge and a noose hanging over your head. In a little time, we can prove we had nothing to do with this man's death. You'll get plenty of time. In jail. Come on, get on your horses. All right, get down. Tom, search the saddlebag. Yes, sir. Go in the house. Hey, Richard, what had happened? These men killed Quirk. Oh. Why, it's unbelievable. Well, they did it to save their own faces. Yes, hey, wait a minute. Here's the jewels, all right. They seem to be all here, but what's happened to the trunk with my wedding dress? That must have been the trunk at Quirk's hideout. There was some, uh, uh, fluffy, lacy things there. In fact, I brought these for you. The rest of the things are left there. Now, Mr. Adams, as long as you still think we're guilty, I wish you'd answer one question. Sure, why not? We had the jewels and the money. Now, if we were guilty, why do you think we rode back here and gave ourselves up without a fight? 
The bolder the outlaw, the more brazen his actions. You probably thought there was something else you could get. You might have had many reasons for coming back. We came back to give the jewels to Marie, and that's all. And no doubt to return the money you went to such trouble in stealing from me. No, only to ask you where you got the money. Where do you think he'd get it? He sold some of his land for half what it's worth. Then you robbed him of the ransom money. And may I ask who he sold the land to? Mark Jackson. Don't you see what he's trying to do? He's using us one against the other to get more land, along with your jewels and my money. Oh, no. Quirk got the jewels and Bradley got the money. Hey, here's the money, and by golly, it's all there. $3,000. Well, it's not all there, Hoppy. What Just about the minute, then? Well, Mr. Cassidy, any more theory? This is not theory, Mrs. Stevens. It's, it's facts. Before we left Arizona, I went to the bank in Flagstaff and got $4,000 in gold back notes. They were all new bills. I recorded all the serial numbers. These are the same bills stolen from me and given to you by Jackson. That proves nothing. You could have had those serial numbers recorded today. Yes, but Jackson still has $1,000 of the money. Now, how would we know the serial numbers on his bills? Well, Mark will be here in a few minutes. I'm sure he'll be amused to be searched for his own money. I hardly think he'd be stupid enough to carry the money around with him. Besides, I don't want him to know that anyone suspects him. Why? Because he had Quirt killed before he could tell what he knew about him. Well, unfortunately, Quirt's not alive to bear you out. But if Jackson thought Quirt was still alive, he'd try to kill him again. What are you getting at? Suppose you tell Jackson that Quirt is still alive but unconscious, and that he's sworn to turn state's evidence. You're out of your mind. Jackson knows a dead man when he sees one. Maybe so. But suppose you put me in a cart and tell him it's Quirt, and that you're taking him into town for confession. Well, you can't do that, Hoppy. They'll kill you. Well, they'll probably try to. But I'm willing to take that chance to prove that Jackson is guilty. Well, I see no reason for deceiving the man who's proved himself to be my best friend. What can you lose by giving them a chance? If nothing happens, you can turn us over to the sheriff in San Bernardino. Well, it seems a pretty gruesome kind of a joke. It's not much of a joke for three men to have ropes put around their necks for something they didn't do. Please, Richard. I think you ought to let them try it. Well, all right, Marie, but I'll have no part in setting this trap. I believe in Mark Jackson. What do you want me to do? Well, when Jackson does get here, tell him that you captured the three of us, but that I got away. All right, boys, tie yourselves up. Mark will never forgive me for this kind of a trick. You'll never forgive yourself if you send innocent men to the gallows. I'm worried. What are you worried about? What chance have we got when the shooting starts? We'll have as good a chance as Quirt had. Sure. Well, look what happened to him. The man that would get himself killed to prove a punch, but a mule beat for stubborn. Uh, uh, say, listen, California, talking about mules, uh, what about Molly? What about it? Well, you ain't gonna have any use for her where you're going. I'd like to buy her from you. <laughs> You'll get her over my dead body. Oh, well, that's awful nice of you, California. Thanks. I'll take good care of her, too. All right. Huh? All right, come Get down, Hoppy. Here comes Jackson. Won't be long now. Hello, Richard, Marie. What is it? What's happening? Richard caught these outlaws. They had the money and the jewels on them. Hope she's giving him the right line. Go gun it no matter what line she gives him. We're still the bait. Yeah. Well, where's Cassidy? He escaped, but we got his partners. And Quirt, too. Quirt? Yes, Richard's taking him into town. He wants to make a statement to the sheriff there. Why? Well, it seems as though someone tried to kill him. Probably Cassidy. Yes, that's my turn. Anyway, Quirt wants to get even. Is he badly wounded? He's unconscious from loss of blood. But he'll recover. He wants revenge too much to die now. And to think I trusted them.
I think it might be better if we try... Why are you so gloomy? You're sitting pretty. You've got the money and Quirt, too. Well, I'm a little worried about Cassidy. Oh. You think he might try to kill Quirt before you get him in town, huh? Well, yes. There's something to that. I'll ride on ahead and look for signs of ambush. Well, that's a good idea. Hoppy! Jackson's riding away. How could you tell him such lies, Marie? Because I'm sure now that Mark Jackson's been lying to us all along. And I'm just as certain that Mr. Cassidy, who saved our lives and property, is our best friend. Uh, well, I'm still not so sure. But, Marie, there might be a little trouble up ahead. I think you'd better ride back to the ranch. No, I want to go with you. No, you'd better go back now, please. All right. All right, let's go. Hey, Adam. How about giving us back our guns? You'll get your guns back if there's any trouble. Come on. You think Jackson will do that? Yeah, with his gang. You don't expect him to shoot Hoppy himself, do you? Hey. What are you two fellas trying to do? Hurry me out of this world? We're still alive. Keep them busy, but be careful of the boss. <laughs>
I ain't got a thing. Give me a gun. You have my gun. Oh, shut the fellow's got it down the road there. You didn't look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't want it. I'll put it back. Yeah. Oh, no. You up here. All right. You ready? Oh, get up there. Come on, man. I ain't in yet. <laughs> San Bartolino will be glad to see you. And I'm glad to see this. Come on. Goodbye, Marie. Goodbye, Lynn. So long, Richard. Goodbye. Congratulations. Thank you. I know you're going to be very happy. We'll never be able to thank you for all you've done for us, Mr. Cassidy. That's quite all right, Mrs. Adams. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, the men are holding the cattle for you at the Stevens Rock. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 And I'll show you a way to get him out of here. Now, just do a little scrubbing on that, will you? 